Dave Klarman is only the second coach ever to go through his rookie season undefeated and win the national championship. Roy Simmons is the winningest active lacrosse coach and the newest member of the Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Last season, North Carolina trounced Syracuse in the opener 10-3 at Chapel Hill. Then the teams met again in the NCAA semifinal. And 17 seconds in, Syracuse defenseman John Winship went down and out with a knee injury. Syracuse had lost Jamie Archer in attackman of mononucleosis. But even with those two players, they would have had a hard time stopping the likes of Ryan Wade, who had two goals, and John Webster, who had three. It was a high-powered North Carolina team with plenty of legs right from the start to the finish, and they more than neutralized the All-American attackman, Tom Marachek. Today, it's the rematch. Super Sports, a production of Adelphia Cable Communications, presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. And on the campus of Syracuse University on a late winter's day where it's a little bit rainy and cool, the number one ranked North Carolina Tar Heels are underneath the Carrier Dome to once again meet the Syracuse Orangemen. And hello again, everybody. I'm Dave Cohen. You know, since the last September, about six months, you've had the chance to watch hundreds of college basketball and football games. And now we turn to a new sport, lacrosse, and those of us at Super Sports are delighted again to become the undisputed leaders in the coverage of the fastest game on two feet, lacrosse. The game played by the boy next door of average physical proportions, a genuine student athlete, less celebrated, less publicized than the basketball and football players, but certainly every bit is capable of providing tremendous athletic skills, artistry, and achievement. And to help describe those achievements, working with me again this year, Dale Drypulcher and Dale, this game, this rematch, reminds me of Ali Frazier number one because the former champ wants to become champ again. He can't become champ today, but he can take a large psychological step in that direction. Well, I think you're right about that. I think there's a lot of people in Central New York that feel the same way because there's a great crowd here. I think it's really electric for a first game for Syracuse. I think one of the, the big problems Syracuse is going to face, this is really only their first game. Carolina's had a chance to do a little more scrimmaging, so they got a little bit of advantage in experience, but they are away from home, so it might even out. Each team has lost something from last year. Carolina's lost the player of the year, the goalie of the year, the defenseman of the year. And they'll have Billy Day in the Nets, who had some action here in the Dome in the NCAA championship game against Towson State. But Syracuse has a totally untested Chris Saran in the Nets. Well, Chris Saran is new. Uh, I've been talking to some of the coaches. One of the things they said about Saran is he didn't have that good a fall, but as, as spring has uh, come around and lacrosse season's picked up, they said he really come on very, very well. He's very coachable. That's what they like about him. When they tell him what to do, he remembers. He uh, he gets in the heat of a game, he remembers what they told him to do. So they're very high on Saran. They think he's going to do a good job, but he's got to be very, very nervous facing North Carolina. Of course, Syracuse has a fellow by the name of Tom Marichek, probably the best attackman in the country. Before this season is over, he may become the all-time leading scorer in college lacrosse. The man who's behind the back shot is his normal shot, his normal way of passing. Well, he's superior. He is the consummate attackman. I think one of the keys is going to be, you saw if you watched the, the clip at the beginning, how many people that he gets on him when he gets the ball. He's going to be a key for Syracuse because they're going to be all over him because they know just how good he is and how much he means to Syracuse. Last year, North Carolina just had tremendous legs. They could run all day, all game long, and beat teams in the fourth quarter. Syracuse feels they have more depth this year at the midfield position where you have to do the bulk of the running. Well, they tell you that North Carolina feels they have 13 guys who can play midfield and can play in games. That's an awful lot of midfield. Syracuse, you're right. They think they're improved in that area. They got good legs. That could be a key because that's how North Carolina won last year. They ran everybody to death, and in the fourth quarter, everybody was tired. That's a, that's a real key mark of uh, North Carolina lacrosse. And another key thing to watch for in lacrosse, the face-offs. The team that dominates the face-offs oftentimes dominates the game. Bob Fazy for Syracuse won 66% of his face-offs a year ago. If he can dominate, Syracuse could have things go their way. Absolutely. Face-off is a real key. Watch for it. If they get behind like that and they start losing face-offs, it can happen a little bit psychological effect, too. So it'll be interesting to see the face-off stats. And you may be able to hear in the background, it is a loud and boisterous crowd that is behind Syracuse as they get set for the opening game of the 1992 season. We're back with you in the Carrier Dome as we get set to bring you Syracuse and North Carolina. The Tar Heels here in the Carrier Dome won twice in the NCAA semifinals and a championship game against Towson State. Aside from that, they've had some tough luck running into Syracuse 
losing a couple of games in sudden death overtime. But this man has never lost a college game, Dave Clarman. And this man has won more college lacrosse games than anybody else. Roy Simmons, assisted by the man on the sideline, Dave Desco. And we're set now to face it off. Jim Buzek for North Carolina and Bob Facey for Syracuse. Buzek scoops it up. Carolina possession. And into the box quickly. Saran gets tested. And the goal by North Carolina. Six seconds into the game. John, John Webster with a goal. This is off a fast break. They get Fazy loses the face off. Carolina gets it. They just position and they say, let's test this new goalie quickly. And they get a shot off, one shot, one goal. And we talked about the importance of faceoffs right there. They got it quickly, what, six seconds, Dave? Goal number one for Carolina. Here is the second faceoff. Fazy battling Syracuse. Ricky Kramer has it. Midfielder with a tremendous pair of wheels. That pass is thrown behind. Lockwood. Syracuse now into a settled offense for the first time, and they work it from behind with Matt Ryder. Ryder moves in. He may have been in the crease. He was. Syracuse gets a shot off, and you're going to see. Watch the watch the foot, right? Oh, yep. He came in afterwards. You see, yep. So. Syracuse down one to nothing and now applying some pressure on the clearing effort of North Carolina. Successful for the moment, but Carolina scoops it back up and the Tar Heels have possession. And a big check at midfield put on there by uh, Syracuse's Mike Doyle. The whistle stops it. 10 seconds, did not advance it. Carolina is going to turn it over. And uh, most of the coaches said, put on your track shoes for this one. Most of them said that there's going to be a lot of running. Syracuse a little bit concerned by the fact that they did not have as many games under their belt. They might say, make some mistakes in terms of uh, penalties. And so far, Tom Finn on the dodge there carries it into the attacking half of the field. Now the Orangemen work from behind again. Here comes Ryder. And that one is over the head of the man from behind. Nice defense there actually by Busick. Got a stick up, made that shot go high. There is Marichek for the first time with the ball. Moving on Bedell. And a behind the back shot. That's a push. And we have a push into the crease. Yeah, you can push him in illegally, but you can't push him in Ill illegally and you'll see the You'll see the push and uh, watch him trying to set up on the crease. There's Marichek. Now Marichek, see that draws the double right there. And all alone is Ryder, but then he gets pushed from behind, and that's illegal. So Syracuse retains possession. And now the orange a little bit more deliberate, down by a score of one to nothing. They're really crowding the crease up. Now they break. That was deflected, regained by Archer. He feeds the crease. Nobody there to play it. Now a loose ball behind the back and in by Marichek. And there it is, that behind the back shot of Tom Marichek, who now has scored in 43 of the 44 Syracuse goals he's played in. Watch and how casually he picks this ball up. Watch. There's the ball. He intercepted. They were trying to go to the goalie to let him clear it. He went behind his back. And Tommy Marichek, he just casually intercepted that pass, went behind the back, and put Syracuse right back in it. Off the faceoff, Lockwood in to pick it up for Syracuse. Switching to the right hand in the middle of the field. And it is picked up now by Fazy, who stays in. He'll look to get off, perhaps, in favor of John Barr. Number 30 will be coming on. Now Ryder has it. And Jamie Archer from behind. Archer did not play against North Carolina in the game last year. Out with mononucleosis. John Barr handles for the first time. Here is Archer on his move, nice check. knocked out of his stick, and taken away for the moment by the uh, Carolina defense. That was Greg Paradine. And here is the dangerous Marichek. That's fly through the air with the greatest of ease. 
and Marichek is pumped. Let's watch this one. This is a classic. Watch the ground ball. Watch him sneak this ball up. Now he goes airborne. Air gates it left-handed right by Day for goal number two. Not even the air gate got the stick wrapped around the goalie's neck as Marichek just did to Billy Day. Good day, he said. Yes. And here is the face with the game now. Two to one in favor of the orange men. Into the stick of Syracuse. Steve Bettinger, who had three goals last year against Carolina. Now Ricky Kramer holding it at his side, waiting for John Barr to come on. And Barr on the dodge has it knocked out of his stick. Back to play it, though. Defensive pressure being put on by Ryan Wade, number 19. Kramer. Nice oh. dodge for an open shot. And it is three to one Syracuse now against North Carolina. The three goals Syracuse has scored here in the opening four minutes equals the total amount of goals they got in the first game last year at Chapel Hill when what? they were shut out in the first quarter. There's the move right there to let him take three steps and go high on Day. And Day has got to be feeling a little bit frustrated. Marichek's burned him twice and he just got a high shot over his right shoulder and Back to the face-off circle. They said it was going to be a lot of running. New face-off man that time out there for the Orange men. That was Tom Gilmartin. Second year at Syracuse after transferring from Maryland. Now Carolina with Gil Hooley. They get it behind. Pass is coming over now. Man free coming in. That was Muir from, he's got the ball now, down low. And score. he beats the goalie, Saran, who is back up in the cage. That time by John Winship, and it is a 3-2 to two game, and this is just the way everybody thought it would go. Just, High scoring. Just like it was built, right? Just like a Hollywood movie. Lots of action. Watch Muir. Makes a move right there. He beats the defensive mini, and he puts it down. Oh, that was a handleable save, and I'm sure Saran is upset. He had pretty good vision, but Muir, nice shot. Beat the midfielder and got goal number two for Carolina. Again, it's Gil Martin on the faceoff now for Syracuse. Contending in there with uh, Steve Muir. Uh, here comes Carolina with it. That's Gil Hooley actually took the face number 30. Andy McNichol is the point man outside number 18. Carolina works from behind looking to tie the game up. Michael Thomas on the move. Breaks free for the shot. Syracuse doubling up in the cage again with Winship and Saran. Yeah, that backside defenseman, if he's will slide in and help out the goalie. Here is Winship defending on Spears, the player from Syracuse, one of many on the Carolina squad. A save by Soran. Easy shot, easy save, but the outlet is thrown away. I think this is the thing that, that is going to have a telling effect. Syracuse only having had a couple of scrimmages and Carolina really having five game, game scrimmage situations. And uh, the timing isn't quite there yet, especially between the goalie and the breaking defenseman, Dave. Chris Saran taking over this year. Jerry DiLorenzo departing after an up-and-down career at Syracuse. Yeah. There's Walt Munsey, the head official today. Billy Day replacing Andy Piazza, the goalie of the year for North Carolina. Now the Tar Heels looking to tie it. Here is Thomas's move. Thomas tied up by Tully, not free, and into the stick of Saran, the check of DeBurn Reed knocked the ball free. Now Tully, who played on the attack last year, can't handle it midfield. Doyle threw his body in. We offside? have an offside. Usually, yeah. Carolina ended up offside, and that will give Syracuse the ball right at the midfield, just over the midfield line. Fred Amaya comes on the field for Syracuse, unencumbered by any brace. Just going to say, Sans brace, huh? Now here's Bettinger, number 12. And the Orangemen go. I guess that's clockwise, isn't it? Yeah. There comes Ryder on the dodge, draws the double, passing back. Nice near catch by Bettinger. But Syracuse can't keep it in play. 
Good defense by Martin, number eight from Carolina. Good hustle, knocked that ball free. One of the things that uh, Carolina does, as does Syracuse, but maybe more for Carolina, they gamble on defense, Dave. They try to cause the, the ball to drop and uh, turn things over. It worked for them there. Alex Martin's a junior from Owings Mills, Maryland. Now here's Carolina attempt to clear. A body put on at midfield. DeBurn Reed from Boston knocked it free, popped it in the air. Ryder, he took a little shove. It was legal. Here's Busick, Jim Busick. Good dodge. Now Shifty. he spots a man open at midfield. And Carolina carries it across. That's Eric Serum at number 11. Another Syracuse area player. Carolina making some changes and killing off some time as they do. Rob Cornish from Perth in Western Australia. Reed is on him. Cornish will go even with the cage and now behind. That defensive midfield has Doyle, Reed, and Thorpe. Thorpe the big stick number 10. Reggie Thorpe. There's the attempted dodge outside by Saramet, but he's not going anywhere on Reggie. Nice job. And Buzek with some very quick feet with a nifty pass. And what a catch and what a hit. Everything is legal that you just saw. <laughs> Doyle gets it up quickly to the transitioning orange man. Marichek backed it in and lost it. And it's scooped up on the ground by John Dolan. Oh, they're going to call a trip. That's going to be the first penalty. That's going to be a time serve job, I think. Let's see what they call. Yeah, trip. So it'll be a minute. So Marichek trying to play a little defense there. Got on Day and sent him turf bound. We're going to check the uh, defensive hit right there. That Ooh. was Tully who bowled over Saramet. They've got to know each other. Yeah, there's a lot of local kids. They went to the same high school. I'm sure they do. A lot of guys from Fayetteville Manlands, Jamesville DeWitt. Those two from West Genesee. And strangely, Dale, Syracuse does not have a freshman this year from West Genesee. Now Carolina with the extra man opportunity. A chance to tie the game off the deflection played by Webster. This is always dangerous. DeBurn Reed pulled it down and he lost it. And here's Michael Thomas. What About happens? to be double and he gives it up. Two players are tangled up. And Carolina throws it away. Off a of Syracuse stick. So it'll stay Carolina. But you know when that Syracuse player and the Carolina player were down, Syracuse actually, although they were only a man down, it made the spaces a lot bigger because they had two guys lying on the ground. Kind of a warm-up for you to uh, do the uh, New York State Wrestling <laughs> Championships here right. at Syracuse on this same weekend. Busy. Now Carolina moves it around on the outside. Michael Thomas. Donnelly is on, 43, in the middle. Thomas scores, and we're tied. Number 13, Michael Thomas, now on the extra man. Looked like they were going to pass it around, and they went, missed the pass, or didn't miss, they skipped it and put it right in the middle, and that man just turned and fired right in front of Saran, and watch. They pass around the top. Now, normally you think it's going to go to the top. It does. Now, he turns there. See that? Redirected right in the middle. And just got a stick on it, but too late. Saran not able to come up with the save. And We are now tied at 3-3. Just checking the saves. Each goalie, Dave, has one save. Charlie Lockwood, number 22. Not really part of the scrum. We get a hole against Carolina. Syracuse gets it on the violation. Ricky Kramer will bring it upfield for Syracuse. Bettinger has it. In a tie game, Syracuse had a 3-1 to one lead. This is Marichek. And Ryder. Oh. The cutter fires and misses. That was Tom Marichek. Syracuse keeps it by virtue of being closest to the shot as it goes out of bounds. Bettinger, good backup, number 12, brings it in from behind. Bettinger had three goals last year against uh, Carolina. Oh! The broke stick broke. Stick. He's playing only with. He's not playing or they'd throw him out of the game. He's going to head to the bench. The handle of the stick. Yeah. He took that, that off. That was smart because, Dave, that's a spear. That that was just a big, sharp piece of wood. And they watch what happens. Here's Paradise. the move right there, right across. And you look at the stick. Look what's left. He sees it. He's 
gets off the field, leaves the head down, and runs out because you don't want to leave that big, sharp piece of wood down there. Nor can you play with a stick that is shorter than the prescribed regulation. That's correct. And they'll be checking that. Oh. Kramer goes <laughs> down, gets up, still has it, passes to the off wing. And now Bettinger gets it back. Flag down. Delayed call is coming up. Can Kramer stop on a dive? Look at those moves. Oh, missed the pass. Tried to look to the center. And there's going to be an interference call. He was looking for, what, number 30, John Barr, I believe. When he made the pa excuse me, made the pass, the flag was down when the ball was dropped. Of course, that stopped it. And now Syracuse will have their first extra man opportunity as uh, Carolina's had one and was successful on one. And Carolina was also successful in killing off the momentum that Syracuse had generated when they scored three unanswered goals to take a 3-1 to one lead. But if you've watched this game long enough, you realize with high-powered teams, it's like college basketball now. No lead is safe. That's right. Of course, we don't have a three-point shot or even a two-point shot in this game, but possession can lead to a lot of goals. Oh! The head save. Syracuse going to be there for that? Indeed. They will retain possession. I don't know whether Day stopped that with a stick or a head, but uh, they all count as saves, and uh, that's why they give you that big face mask. With he, that. Did, he didn't flinch at all. Well, he's got to protect it. It's got to be a little scary. It's got to sound like a big thunk. The reverberations have to go through your body. Yeah. Teams are at equal strength now, and Lockwood got blindsided just enough to have the ball come out of his stick as Cornish dislodged it. Here's Bettinger. North Carolina ball. Good hustle, Holmes Harden, number five. Holmes has had two other brothers play yep. at North Carolina. Boyd and Graham, and both were all American defensemen. So he's got a tough act or two to follow. To follow, sure does. He did a nice job there, though, and uh, turned the ball back to his teammates. Now they're going to have to clear. Syracuse applying more pressure in this game. And I believe they did last year against North Carolina in the early part of the game. Reggie Thorpe on Saramet. Now it's Busick with it. He's quick. Doyle is marking him. The spin move by Danny Levy against Tully. And Saran had that one lined up. Tully, the erstwhile attack man from last year. Got some time in. They, they were really actually pleased with what he did last year on the attack. Got some shots off. off occupied some people. He was a big target, and he's now starting on the defense. Danny Levy, who just shot there, leading North Carolina in shots taken with 13. Joe Bedell and DeBurn Reed are matched up in front of the cage. There they are at about the 20-yard line. They're pushing and shoving and, I'm sure, talking also. Let's and see. Yeah, we're gonna... The official spotted them. Yeah, he called an official time, too. He's sending them both off. Yeah, both of them front sportsmanlike. So they'll both be out for a minute. Well, he had certainly a better view and chance to hear what was going on as we suspected from this far away. You know, there's, uh, how'd you do on your midterms or something like that? Or, <laughs> at any rate, uh, they're both going to be down for a minute. So although nobody gets an advantage in terms of men, it, it opens the field up a little bit. So that'll be a minute. Tie game at 3-3. We're under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Many people expect this to be the best game of the year in all of college lacrosse. Here's Busek with a bounce shot. North Carolina will keep it. You can see he just had just enough. Fort not able to cover a stick the whole time. He took a shot not on goal, but Busek, a very, very good lacrosse player. Carolina looking to tie the game up. Saramet, Music on the fake to Thomas from behind. Reggie Thorpe, one of the newcomers for Syracuse, transfer from Herkimer Community College. They're going to try to double him, and that did prevent him from getting a quality shot off. Yeah, that's a good term. It was not a quality shot. It was a shot, but not a quality shot. Michael Thomas from behind, and Tully is on him. Donnelly just came in off. 
Good nice. move by Tully Quick to dislodge shot. the ball. Here comes Soran. They say he plays a lot like Matt Palem did for Syracuse, which would mean he would venture from the nets <laughs> time and time again. Got that big stick down there. They want to get it out, and Carolina's going to go after him until they can get their short stick guys on, and now they've got it settled and got the ball behind. Marichek gives it up. Bettinger, Lockwood, his only shot once. That was the shot that we believe rattled off the face mask of Billy Day. Jamie Archer, probably Syracuse's premier feeder. First game action, quite a while for Jamie. It was blooped out of his stick and taken away by Carolina. Here are the Tar Heels, Donnelly in transition. Oh! Ryan Wade can't Boy. find the handle. Now he does. Unsettled situation. Some guys open. Let's see what they do. Bedell gets the feed and holds on against Kramer. Lots of people looking for that hit. Nice check. And picked up by Kramer. He'll give it up. And now Syracuse into a transition game if oh, they hold on. Pass. But it's intercepted by Carolina. Back comes Donnelly with well, Wade to his left. He overshoots his man, Webster, and Carolina throws it away. Now watch Carolina. I bet Carolina going to put a little pressure on now as Syracuse has to clear. They are a team that tries to put defensive pressure on all over the place. Brian Tully has got the ball, and uh, Syracuse, again, down in the game experience to Carolina thus far in the season. And Saran stumbles a little bit, comes out, gives it up. That's Finn. Don Finn finding an open man and a save by Billy Day. His best save of the game, maybe his first so far, off the shot by Roy Colsey for Syracuse. Colsey really didn't take a good shot. Hit him right in the stick. Carolina now making some changes as they hold on to the ball. Well, this is their philosophy, as we said, get as many people in the game offensively and uh, lots of midfields and try to tire people out. And I think Syracuse is countering with that, using quite a bit of personnel here in the first quarter. Yep, you're right. Steve Muir with it now, number 32. Gil Hooley is the cutter, number 30. Thomas has his hand raised, number 13. Colsey applying the pressure on Muir. Now Michael Thomas with a minute and 40 to go in the first. Winship. Spears. Oh, nice move. And a shot that's wide of Saran. Syracuse is going to get it. Saran out the back. Able to uh, get to that line. Now he's going to have to clear. Syracuse a little problem clearing the last couple of times on the long pass. Now Saran's going to take it up. He may go. He's across. He's into the slot. He's coming down the middle. He fires, and it's wide. The crowd loved that. Now nobody picked him up, you know. He just... He just ambled on down, and we got past the midfield, and everybody was staying with their men. Nobody wanted to pop out and take the goalie because he would have dumped the ball off. They let him go, and nobody picked him up. Eventually, somebody should have stopped him, but uh, he got a shot off and didn't even take a shot in return. We saw Matt Palin do that a few years ago, and back comes Don Finn, and he puts Syracuse up 4-3 to three here in the final minute of the first quarter, and a near fight breaks out. And Finn is going to draw a penalty, that was perhaps. Not, that was not good. Donnie McNichol involved as well, number 18. McNichol definitely pushed him, but it's the old football rule, Dave. When they turn around, the guy that does the retaliation is the guy that gets caught, and that's exactly what happened to Finn. Unsportsmanlike is going to be the call. At least against Dom Finn. We'll see what Let's the see, they, initial offender They gets. may offset it. I don't know. Now, Finn able to really watch the shot, and if you can see where it ends up, it really comes down low. He takes a left-handed shot, beats the midi, watch where the ball, boom, right between the legs of Day. And now we're going to get a Carolina timeout, and I don't know what they finally decided, whether they were, were down for a minute or not. We will check it out. 
And we have a timeout with 55 seconds to go here in the first quarter in a 4-3 to three game with Syracuse on top for the second time. Let's check some of the individual shooting, Dale. Uh, Mike Thomas with three shots for North Carolina. He scored once. Marichek is two for two. And Dom Finn hitting on one of his two shots. Syracuse has four goals. Webster has only shot once. And he scored. And Muir has scored on his only shot. Another statistic that people are not perhaps familiar with, ground balls. And that oftentimes is an indication of controlling the tempo of the game when the ball's on the ground coming up with it. Carolina at this point has 12, Syracuse 8 with 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. So Carolina perhaps controlling the action a little bit. At least that statistic would indicate that. But uh, Syracuse up by one on that great shot by Dom Finn. There's a look at Chris Soran in his first game. As a starter for Syracuse, would have been nice to have scored. Yeah. We may yet see another attempt. Remember Matt Palin on that time when he went downfield and scored, took quite a hit, got his stick broken. Yep. But he lived to tell about he it. Li- you know, and this is usually where, see, everybody's saying, well, I don't want to leave my man. He's going to make a pass. They had one guy trailing him, but nobody dared come out and take a shot at him, and uh, he got the shot off. Billy Day would know what that's about. He scored a goal for Carolina. I think uh, well, Saran's a, a transfer from Franklin and Marshall, I believe. Yes. Division three, and he yep. made the jump up. Billy Day's goal came against Villanova. Carolina is going to get the ball. I'm checking the penalty box. Let's see. One, two. Three. Okay, so they're, they're even that they're all down a guy here, right? Is that correct? Ryan Wade with it, number 19. There's a save by Soran, or at least he gathered in the shot that was wide of the net. Doyle having trouble initially and redirecting it to they his got, goalie. they got to get it out of there. No, they did not. I'll bet you they fa- failed to advance, absolutely. Ten-second violation? Yep, they did not. They were not able. They had to make too many passes, and uh, they loop them through the air. It takes time, and... So both teams down one man for a minute. See the brace being worn by John Winship as a result of the injury he suffered last year against this team. Only played 17 seconds. Here he is on Spears, putting him down, trying to keep him down. Carolina's going to play for the last shot if they can. Well, you know, it does, uh, with those two guys out, it makes it a little, uh, a little less crowded out there on the crease with two guys in the box. Here's sort of a clear out. And there's a stick save by Saran. Nice hustle by Saran. And with five seconds to go, Syracuse will have the ball and the lead. (laughs) Having some problems managing some people in the box as uh, this is uh, new for uh, Syracuse, their first real game, and there's going to be the end of the first quarter. The end of one here in the Dome in the rematch. And Syracuse leads North Carolina 4-3. to three. We'll continue with our Super Sports coverage right after these words. In their first meeting last year, North Carolina led Syracuse 4 to nothing after one quarter. Then after one quarter of the semifinal game, it was a 3-3 tie. Here today, Syracuse leads it 4-3. to three. Carolina's Buzek wins the faceoff, and he is on the move. Runoff is intended course by Ricky Kramer. They're at full strength now. Everybody's got uh, a full complement of players that they released. Steve Spears works against John Winship. Spears unable to get a shot away. Saramet and on the far side, Thomas. Fazy on the midfield is defending here. Not well enough as the shot beats Saran and the game is tied again. Michael Thomas getting his second goal of the game. And we're tied at 4-4. You know, I thought that Carolina might go at Beardsley, 47. He is a freshman defenseman for Syracuse, but uh, they have not been uh, picking on him. We'll check the quarter stats. North Carolina leading in shots, 11-9. Saves. Two for Carolina, day three for Saran. Faceoffs four to three. Ground balls one we talked about before, 12-9. And 
pretty much tells the story. Close lacrosse game. Colsey had a stick on it as it came off the faceoff. Who, who, who owns it's it? Off of Carolina. Uh, that's off of Carolina. Number five, is that Harden? Yeah, I think it was kicked about with his foot, and Syracuse will get possession. Dom Finn will trigger it in. John Desco flashing in one of the many signs that they have in lacrosse. Very few of which I've been able to understand or <laughs> decipher. There's Gil Martin going to the left hand for a bounce shot and backed up by Archer. So Syracuse keeps it. Another one of those. Not a really good shot. Gil Martin has it. Guarded loosely by Steve Muir. And Syracuse in a controlled pattern offense with Dom Finn. Trying to beat his man on the dodge. It's Harden defending him. Oh, nice pass, pass knocked is down. Knocked down and picked up by Matt Ryder. That's Paradine. Nice job, 41. They for feed Carolina. the crease and good defensive work by Carolina. Muir has it now, going by Gil Martin into his gallop. He'll come across, give it up to McNichol. He draws a double. Oh, Saran deflects it high and wide. Off the hard shot by John Webster. Webster took a left-hand riser. That thing started on the carpet and was about two feet over the cage by the time it got there. Saran wings it down to Winship. And he returns it. In the midfield area, John Barr. This is where a midfielder needs those legs. You catch it on the defensive side, then you become an offensive player. Ricky Kramer on the get back now to Charlie Lockwood. He'll start his move from way out, going left for the shot. Deflected by the defenseman, I believe, back there, who was helping out. Type high bounce shot, not on the cage, but Syracuse retains possession. Nice move. And Barr's shot stopped by Billy Day. Syracuse keeps it again. Yeah, they. I don't know. They seem to be going high on him. Day uh, didn't even see that one, I don't think. But uh, Finn got low on him previously. We'll see if they change where they shoot. Barr splits the D. He gets taken down from behind. There is oh. no call. John Desco racing down a, the sideline. A trip. Complaining to one of the officials. Meanwhile, Carolina gets it down into the attacking zone. And here's Spears. Carolina four, Syracuse four. Everybody changing now. We're Trying to get the matchups they want. Uh, Reggie Thorpe in. Number 10. Carolina now will have Rob Cornish begin to play. Giving it up to Buzek. Change of direction. Another change. Can he get an angle for a shot? Gives it up instead. Spears. Pretty good defense by Kramer before. Winship again denying him a shot. Spears not forcing his shot. Here's Cornish. Big man last year in terms of ground balls, not so much in scoring. Music on the back line. Oh, tried Went. to get him, knock him out. Played by Kramer. He's going to come in and nice Saran save. down low. Maybe his best save of the game. Absolutely. Oh. But again, Syracuse throws it away. Yeah, they're having problems with the clear. They are having problems with the, the transition, Dave, where you make the save and they pop it out and... Uh, I'm sure they are a little bit rusty, not able to uh, get that much experience in doing that other than practice, and it's a whole lot different when you're playing the number one team in the country. Eleven ten left in this second period. From the point... That's Carolina Webster. was effective on that earlier. Beardsley on him. Carolina has led in this game only once at one to nothing. Here is Spears over the top. That time goes Winship. The ball actually came free for another a save. And Saran getting better as the game goes on. E. On the move. Winship seeing lots of action. Yes, he's playing very well. 
Now Syracuse gets it behind. Beardsley didn't know whether to stay on or go back on defense. The freshman defenseman goes back, and Syracuse changes some people. Dom Finn, his group, midfield on. Marichek with a pair of goals. Now Roy Colsey, number three. Colsey, Finn, and Gilmartin, the midfield. Here's Dom Finn trying to change directions on Ryan Wade. Knocked out of his stick. Colsey tries to get it, but taken first by Donnelly. And now Joe Bedell has it. He had a big game last year against Syracuse. Carolina looking to take the lead at 5-4. to four. Joe Bedell had three goals and three assists, tying and setting career highs, tying his goal career high, a new record for points in the game. He's got the ball now. That was in the semifinal game last year. Here comes his move on Finn. I thought he stepped in. Yeah, it looked like he did. They like this matchup. This is Syracuse's offensive midfield. They don't did not have their defensive midfield in. Couldn't get him in on the transition. Suddenly, this has become a chess match, and there's Soran again. And Dom Finn. Good pass onto the wing. Beardsley. Beardsley with a big stick. Gives it up. Bettinger. Sending to Marichek to the near side rider. <laughs> They're sending Beardsley, the freshman defenseman, back. Get a shorter stick over there. Now Marichek. Will he work from behind? No, he'll give it up. No, nice check. Terrific check on that play. Paradine, nice check by 41. Starts it the other way. And here is a break by Carolina, even with a crease. Another save. I think he got a stick on that. Ball marked quickly for play. It's back in. One of the things the officials, Dave, uh, they're concentrating on this year is keeping the game moving. And they are not taking very much time between shots and decisions when the ball goes out of bounds. They start right up again. This is Donnelly. Uh, Langhoff is in the game. Greg Langhoff, number four for the uh, North Carolina Tar Heels. Sophomore from Lutherville, Maryland. To Burn Reed. Bedell gets the turf. Duburn Reed will get the penalty. He'll get the push. Duburn Reed, a little uh, overzealous on his uh, pushing. Now uh, he gets sees from behind. It's kind of obvious. Where, oh, there you go. I'd like to help you. What, you going that way? Okay. The thing is, you can get right back up and score. They had to get the ball away from him. And Duburn Reed is going to take a 30 second break. So now, another man up opportunity for Carolina. They scored on their previous one. If they score now, they'll take the lead. The last time they went right to the middle to number 13. That was Thomas, yep. and that's where he's set up right now. See him sandwich in there between two men. Now he goes behind, and he gets the ball. Somebody else, Saramet, goes into the slot. Nice Carolina up. with an open shot. Soren save, rebound wide. Tully tosses it in the air. Goalie out. Saran is out. Well, this is uh, this is great. That's a scrum. <laughs> That's lacrosse. Up. Oh. Here's Donnelly. Low Another and wide. Save. Thomas paid for the rebound that he picked up. And a Syracuse man goes down. He took a shot. It might be Beardsley who's down. It's McGowan. Is that 27? He had just come onto the field as Carolina was transitioning. Yeah, it is 27. He's up and trying to walk it off. Sean McGowan. But he did manage to uh, knock the ball away and get it out. Watch uh, watch Saran. Left-handed, boom, foot out, great. Not able to control it, however. Ball dribbled out, and uh, Carolina picked it up again, but Saran got the stick and the foot. You see the foot out there, too? Great camera work. McGowan is okay, leaving the field now with the trainers and team doctor. But he's put together. He's six foot and 210 pounds. Yeah. Dave Clarman is a native of Wontaw, Long Island. Played at Nassau Community College and then transferred to North Carolina. 
as a second team All American defenseman in 76. Saran may have gotten a piece of that. He did. Carolina gets it. They have dominated action. That's a helpful crossbar for Saran. It should be even pretty soon. Up into the lower stands. Yeah, they're even. Syracuse wants a timeout. John Desco, the demonstrative one, on the Syracuse sideline. We have a timeout with seven minutes to go here in the first half. North Carolina and Syracuse are tied at 4 4. As we mentioned before the game, Roy Simmons is not only the winningest active coach in college lacrosse, he is now a member at long last of the College Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Inducted just a couple of weeks ago, and we asked Slugger about what the award means to him. Hall of Fame, special. Absolutely extra special. Lacrosse Foundation is a special place and a great organization, and my dad has been in the Hall of Fame for a number of years. And I guess that's the extra perk I had. I had my son, uh, my oldest boy who helps me coach, and my father, 92 years old, a Hall of Fame member, introduced me to the lacrosse world at the Hall of Fame induction. So it's a father-son uh, combination with the grandson looking out. It was great. Roy Simmons. Can you imagine being a Hall of Fame coach, the winningest coach ever, but you're facing a man today who has never lost a college game, Dave Clarman, as head coach of North Carolina. He's 18 and 0. First father and son. Roy Simmons the third. Most people felt that induction was long overdue. In a 4-4 tie now, North Carolina has the ball. McNichol. Thorpe has taken him uh, apart. Oh, they're going to call him for a hold. Boy, he was all over him, but he gets called for a hold, so that's another penalty. Syracuse, the last time, let's watch it. The sequence, Thorpe is just, well, that was a nice fake. That was McNichol. He was a surgeon, Carolina. Yeah. a surgeon, surgeon on that one. Yes. Slicing him and dicing him, but getting called for the penalty, so now Syracuse down a man again. It's Carolina's third attempt, and the man up. And the last time, they put a lot of pressure, a lot of... A lot of shots, and then McGowan was able to knock the ball out and killed the penalty. But uh, tough situation. Oh, that didn't get by. It was McGowan again. Sacrificing the body. Stopped the shot. And they want to get it in that box. Can they? Yes. Release. And now that will release the penalty. The feed and the score by Marichek. Now that was smart. And Syracuse goes up 5-4. to four. You go from a man down into position to score so quickly in this game. You know why this was smart? Watch McGowan. Now, usually the guy with the big stick, the defenseman, says, look at this, I'm one-on-one -on -one with this guy, I'm going to kill him. And then he says, you know, I think I'll give the ball to Marichek because I know what he can do with it. They had the goalie out of position. It was a great, great position and a pass by number 27 right there. Great job. Marichek obviously finished it off, but uh, you got to expect that of Marichek. McGowan just did a great job of, of getting rid of that ball. Marichek's third goal of the game. And Syracuse on the face by Fazy. He feeds it in to Ryder. A little bit beyond his reach and out of bounds. Marichek began this is senior season with 135 goals. And now he has 138, so he needs 55 to break Gary Gates' Syracuse record. And he needs 56 more to break Stan Cockerton's U.S. Intercollegiate Lacrosse Association record. Oh, that's 10, ten second call. Good play. That was by about a half a second before Day was able to get rid of it. You know, that's got to be the best rule they've introduced in college lacrosse. Yeah, I like Remember it. Remember how many times the goalie used to run around the yep. cage, around and around with a cat and mouse game? And, you, and it, it won, you could do that, of course, if you were a man down, but this 10 seconds just makes it get up and get on with it. And Ryder did a nice job of uh, playing position there and to force Day to take that extra half a second, and that was all it took. It really gives the defense uh, some incentive to play. Now Lockwood on the give from behind. 
Marichek fell into the crease with his uh, hand, or that was Bettinger who fell. Yeah. Number 12, his hands touched in the crease. See, that's the kind of thing, you know, it doesn't look like it's that important, but you lose the darn ball. Now let's see if they can't put a little pressure on it. I was going to say that Carolina had a little better luck clearing up to this point. They do it pretty easily there. Not much pressure that time by Syracuse. Nope. Here comes Carolina looking to tie the game again. There's McNichol. Spears and Thomas. Good shake-free move there for the moment. Boy, Spears and Winship have been locked up a number of times today. They've both been very busy. Beardsley, number 47, matched up with Webster, who's in the slot. So one defenseman is staying at home. The other two are moving. Here they are, Beardsley and Webster. Only a freshman, Beardsley, 47. One of the most highly recruited players in the country last year. That man, 47, right Here's there. Gil Hooley, matched up with John Barr. You have 4.40 to go in the half. Webster and Beardsley's on him. He's a takeaway man, Beardsley. That's his, that's his specialty. He's only a freshman out there now, but look at the stick. Oh, missed oh. there. Oh, but not, but not on the second chance he didn't miss. That was the old Pat McCabe over the top. I'll let you beat me, and then I'll strip you of it. Syracuse comes away. Bad oh, pass. Poor pass. Intended for Ryder. Here comes McNichol leading Carolina back. Syracuse races to Burn Reed on. He gets there in time. And he gets called. We're going to give him a push. Let's see if they give him a push or a slash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're going to push him from. They're going to call from behind. But watch, watch Reed. You know, this is just like this is like interference in football. I guess he figured he's going to save a goal because he really labeled him. So it's Burn Reed who shouldn't be too tired because the last couple of times he's been out there, he's been out there for about five seconds and knocks somebody down and ends up in the penalty box. Dubur was on the field for about three seconds. <laughs> but that's all right. He's enthusiastic and... Uh, Stop the goal is what he did. Yeah, and maybe postpone it. Might have eliminated. Let's see Syracuse. Another fourth man up opportunity, I believe, for Carolina. Saramet, number 11. Oh, nice fake. Bypass him that time. And nice. to the middle. It's deflected. McGowan. Down. Yeah, it was McGowan who's racing up looking for the return pass. He has it now. Get in the and box. Bettinger. There you go. That's a release. Marichek with it. All even. I think McGowan's done three things. Three times he's been in there, he's done three good things. Jamie Archer in the game now. He's been quiet to this point. There's John Bark coming on. Number 30. Lockwood has been fairly quiet. He's taken two shots. Here's his dodge on the right hand. He cranks. He fires. Didn't even get to the goal. Yeah, it was deflected. And here comes Dolan back for Carolina, holding that ball out tantalizingly. Yeah, that big stick. And Langhoff has it now with a step on Winship. Winship moving very, very well. Yeah, with that big brace on. Different matchup now, at least temporarily. As they got a different group in. Carolina, number 12. Levy. Carolina seemingly has had the ball about twice as long as Syracuse in the second quarter. And they have only one goal in this quarter. It's been a very defensive quarter. You gotta get rid of that ball when there's four. There you go. Now nice Lockwood. Job. Each team has only scored once in the first 12 minutes of the second quarter. I think the defense has kind of asserted themselves and uh, the midfield defense, Dave, and uh, they, they played very well. And I think the goalie, especially Syracuse Saran got hot, made a number of nice saves. Last year in the semifinal game, that second quarter was the big one for Carolina. Ball down. Bark goes down, but he covers up the man. <laughs> Look at this is great. Carolina outscored Syracuse seven to two last year in the second quarter of the semifinal. When Marichek gets it, the crowd oh, oh. roars. Yep, they all start to stand up, and then they applaud. Gil Martin's coming on. Yeah, they're getting some new people in. Uh, the, the defense committee's coming in for Carolina, and they uh, going to be a race in with Colsey. And the crowd unhappy as the players raced off the field, and there's a goal by Colsey, the first of his 
Syracuse career, and the Orange would have a two-goal lead again at 6-4. to four. Nice job by Colsey. He was coming in from the substitution area up in the air. Nice shot. He really had to go up. He had to extend himself, get way up in the air. And, and, and Colsey, 5'11", 188 pounds, out of Yorktown, Yorktown Heights. A hot bed of recruiting for Syracuse lacrosse. Puts in goal number six. Syracuse earlier had a two-goal lead at three to one, and now they have the two-goal lead again, six to four. Faceoffs even at five apiece up to this point. Fazy. Oh, nice check. Marichek. Look at that stick work. Yeah, we talked about how many people he's going to attract. There's Lockwood. Charlie really bulked up in the weight room. He's got to be one of the strongest men out on the field. But so far, he hasn't put the ball in the cage in three and a half games for him without a goal. Covering last season as well as the first half of this, Ricky Kramer. Looking for the double and then hoping to get rid of the ball as Carolina loves to gamble defensively. And they got Marichek on the wing. Kramer goes low for the left-hand shot that's just high. Syracuse taking some shots, but only their 14th as opposed to 23 for Carolina. And that's going to be a timeout. With 39 seconds to go here in the half, a timeout is taken with Syracuse in the lead by a 6-4 to four score. When you look at those shots I was talking about, the discrepancy at this point, nine more shots for Carolina than Syracuse, but Saran on a lot of those shots I thought did a great job, got a number of saves. He's up to 13 saves, which is uh, that's a lot for a guy who is uh, facing the number one team and has done a good job. 13 saves in the first half. Last year in the semifinal game, Jared DiLorenzo made 19 in the entire game. Next for Syracuse, the Yale Bulldogs here in the uh, Carrier Dome. <laughs> Against the Orange Men, Mike Walvogel, coach at Yale. A team that has had its ups and downs. Always contending for the Ivy League crowd. That'll be one week from today. In the meantime, we have a timeout, and Chris Saran, who started in very shaky fashion, allowing a goal just six seconds in, has really settled down. And look at the amount of saves he has made. Billy Day coming up with two. You know, in, in, in talking to uh, yeah, those guys, probably don't see quite as well as we do, but they up there by choice. They're watching a basketball game. <laughs> right. Uh, he said Saran uh, does not get easily rattled, and uh, he, I said, suppose they score on him early. What do you think will happen? John Desco said he'll, he'll bounce back. He's a very coachable kid, and he has come up big so far at this point with 38 seconds left in this first half. And let's see now if uh, Syracuse can tally again before the half comes to a close. That would be their biggest lead. Lockwood. Oh, it gets robbed there. Harden. Yep, got stripped. There he is, Holmes Harden Jr. On the gallop, on the give. Inside, high. Spears was camped out, ideal position, but he shot it high. Yep, it went up over the top right. Spears had three goals against Syracuse last time they played. He's been blank to this point. Little one-on-one, -on -one. Spears, little... Uh, Not going to score this time out. either. Saran comes out and wings it way down as time is about to expire. And it just has. The end of the first half, and Syracuse sprinting toward the locker room with a 6-4 to four lead over North Carolina, the defending national champions. We'll be right back after this. Back with you in the Carrier Dome at the half. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drive Poulter. It is Syracuse 6, 
And North Carolina 4. And Dale, maybe it's a little surprising the game is as low scoring as it is considering the way we started with a flurry of goals, including Carolina's goal right off the opening faceoff. I thought there might be a little case of nerves there at the beginning, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Saran uh, brand new in the goal in Carolina. We talked about faceoffs. Got the faceoff. They went right down, put it to Saran, and as you said, six seconds later, it was one nothing Carolina. Carolina winning that faceoff and taking it right in, but Syracuse came back with two goals by Tom Marachek. This second one was absolutely a beautiful piece of work. Air Marachek coming up. Watch number 42. Very unsettled situation. He sees nobody there between he and the goalie, Billy Day, and he puts it right around his neck, Dave. Left-handed, great shot. And then the story became Saran. Watch this flurry now midway through the second quarter. This is birth of a goalie. Yeah, he couldn't control the rebound. Went out, he went, got a stick on it again. Goes back, Carolina still retaining possession here. And Saran running out, watch him, going out, knocking people down, running back in the cage. And now Carolina once again comes up with the ball. And Saran, the heir apparent here as the goalie, watch. Watch the foot and watch the, look at that, beautiful. And he really picked up in the second quarter. The butterflies are gone. They've replaced by, I think, a whole era of confidence. Save that shot off the stick of Donnelly. And here's a look now at the halftime statistics. North Carolina getting the majority of the shots. And they did dominate action in that second quarter. But Syracuse has the two-goal lead. Everything else fairly close. Ground ball is 21-17. Also a little bit indicative of them controlling the tempo. But a lot of those shots came in flurries. And Saran knocked three or four of them away. So uh, it's been a very, very exciting first half. In fact, one of the shots for Syracuse was taken by Saran as he went on a length of the field rush. Came close to scoring, but he didn't. Syracuse leads it 6-4. to four. The third quarter is coming up. The third quarter has just begun. Syracuse leading North Carolina 6-4. to four. Dave Cohen along at Dale Drive Pulcher. This is Chris Saran, the Syracuse goalie. Transfer from Franklin to Marshall. He saw very brief action in parts of seven games last year, but making his first start and enjoying a great first half with 13 saves. Mike Doyle for Syracuse. Waiting for personnel changes. He gives it up to Ricky Cavanaugh. Or Ricky Kramer, that is. Syracuse taking time, getting to burn Reed off the defensive midi and getting number 30 on, John Barr. And now they're set to go. Here is the move by Kramer. Into a crowd, the feed and the bounce shot score. Jamie Archer gets the goal after a quiet first half and it's been a long time coming for a Jamie Archer as Syracuse now takes a three-goal lead for the first time in the game. It was amazing they were able to force that ball into the crease. There were two Carolina guys there, but Kramer, nice job of getting the ball into Jamie Archer, and uh, he just wheeled and fired for goal number seven. Syracuse up by three. Seven to three, Syracuse. Seven to four, Syracuse, as Lockwood overruns it, and Bob Fazy picks it up. Archer was a big man in uh, Syracuse's victory down in Baltimore against Johns Hopkins last year, but then fell victim to mononucleosis, did not play in the game against North Carolina. Here's a feed and a deflected shot. The Orange will keep it as they had double backup men on that play, Bettinger and Ryder. Last couple times down, they seem to have been feeding from the top of the crease into the crease and eschewing the run behind with the attack. You said eschewing, not eschewing. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Bar on yep, the double. in and out move. Lockwood yes. wheels and deals. A classic. That's a classic right there. As soon as they jumped, he was waiting for him to jump, and he dumped it off. And that was one-on-one -on -one with Day and goal number eight. Watch the, watch the double team come. There's Bar. Now, there, there, see the double right there? And then he sees this man's open. He takes a left-handed shot, and it, that quick. And you say the fastest game on two feet. That's how quickly you can score. So Lockwood ends his scoring drought that carried over from last season. And comes moments after Jamie Archer got on the scoreboard. A couple of local area players. 
And they've given Syracuse an 8-4 lead and a violation against Carolina. And it's a very inauspicious start for the Tar Heels here in the third quarter. This is a game that Syracuse wants so badly. They have talked about this game for weeks and weeks. They've been on a mission. Well, last year's game with uh, all that happened. Oh, Dom Finn deflected. Ryder tried to pick up the rebound. Billy Day has it. Dolan, the defenseman, upfield. Finds Ryan Wade. He eludes the stick check. Steps by Colsey, carrying it into the box with the left hand. Ryan Wade gets it back. They're going to change, get DeBurn Reed in for Syracuse. Good switch by Syracuse up top. Yep, and DeBurn Reed waits coming in out of the box to make sure he gets in with Bedell. Bedell. Three minutes gone in this third quarter. It's been dominated by Syracuse. Nice change oh. of direction by Donnelly. Thorpe did a nice job of running him off there, the big stick defender, the midfielder. Now Webster to Wade. Syracuse sags off of him. Colsey meets him now. Checks it out of his stick. Nice stick check. Webster regains it to Donnelly with a good ball fake and a low hard shot. Knocked down. It may have gotten the pipe. Syracuse with Reed on the clear. Nice look. Reed puts it into overdrive. He shoots and just misses. Good shot. That was a great shot by that young man. He didn't have, the goalie did a nice job of taking the angle away, but he did get a nice shot and waited. He saw back up out of the corner of his eye, so it was an excellent shot. Syracuse 8, North Carolina 4. Tom Marichick, three goals in the first half. Ryder to Archer. Now Marichek, counterclockwise this time. Amaya is on number eight. Ten and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Very deliberate Syracuse uh, offense at this moment. He's going to draw a crowd. He did draw a crowd. Andy Boland did. Carolina oh, mishandles Carolina. it. Yep. Unforced error. And the ball out of bounds. It belongs now to the Orange men. Bedell, number six, could not track it down. Syracuse forcing the action, putting it on, and getting the shots on Carolina in this third quarter. Five shots this quarter for Syracuse so far, so... They are putting the pressure on. Now Kramer and Lockwood come on. Lockwood goes to the slot, number 22. There's a cutter away from the ball out of your picture. Now Kramer with his little hop step, change of direction, the spin back, the give, and a laser from up top <laughs> from the laser, laser, Charlie Lockwood. That's a nice shot. Keeps him honest. Keeps Day thinking. The goalie from Carolina. Shots like that are why they don't allow you to sit behind the cage. That's right. Barr is guarded on the near side. No room for Finn to pass to him. So Finn goes on the move and he cranks it wide. And Syracuse retains it again. Getting shots off. Waiting, looking for the the jump from Carolina. Here's a oh. quick move to the cage. Bar missed. It's a shot. And again, Archer, who hadn't even moved, was the backup man. Yeah, they've got good backup. They're running things out from up on top and then starting out from behind. Spread offense now. Lots of lots of room. Here comes the hop by Lockwood. Lots of room to dodge. Again, it's Archer behind and Ryder to the near side. Marichek, far side. You know, when you spread them out like that, it's a lot harder to double team, and if you do, you got to go a much longer distance. Ball is lost by John Barr. 
Carolina with Muir coming out of there. Two armsmen go down. Muir is trying to be right down from behind, and he is, but it goes right in the air into McNichol's stick, and he loses it to Marichek. The man who knocked it free initially. Marichek up on the wing to Finn. The crowd comes to its feet. A bloop feed to the near side to Beardsley, and they give it up to Ryder. What's the call? What do we got here? It looked like a hold. No. Ward? It's going to be... I will tell you when we know. It looks like a ward. So it'll be loss of possession? Or not? Not. <laughs> Syracuse will have it. Unsportsmanlike conduct, one minute. This was not a ward. See if we can see what happens. There's the check. There's the. Oh, can't do that. Can't throw your stick. Oh, what he did was he threw his stick away, picked up the Syracuse player's stick <laughs> to give the Syracuse player a longer distance to go. Well, that was clever. Yeah, but he got caught on the replay. Dom Finn behind. Lockwood Ooh, sent the laser at him. Yep. Syracuse is third or second man up opportunity. There's second, Bettinger yep. at the crease. They go inside, outside, in the net. Roy Colsey gets his second Syracuse goal in his debut as an Orangeman, and the score now goes to nine to four. Colsey, nice on the extra man. And they took that from pretty far out, actually. Let's watch him work it around. Nice passing in. Now make him go out, stretch the defense, and he just takes it, and he goes high. And they have been able to go a couple of different directions on Day. Right there, that was high. Day has four saves at this point. Nine goals, four saves. Tom Finn gets the assist on the goal by Roy Colsey. Nine to four now, Syracuse in the lead and seemingly in the driver's seat against North Carolina. Music, Cornish, Saramet, come on. They certainly seem to be in, Syracuse seems to be in pretty good condition, Dave. Well conditioned this early in the season. Here's a quick feed oh. and a shot, that's in. As soon as you say it, right? Saramet on a quick stick goal as Carolina ends uh, quite a drought in this game. Great defense by Syracuse, 744 left. In the third quarter, they have held Carolina to five goals. Watch it right here. Offside, he got him on a little, not especially hard shot, but well placed by Saramet. Picks up goal number one, and Carolina, goal number five. 744 left. As we said, Dave, <laughs> they can come in bunches. Now the all-important faceoff as Carolina, if they get the faceoff, can go right back and score another one. Saramet from West Tennessee High School here in the Syracuse area. John Barr picks up the ground ball. Now here's Ricky Kramer. North Carolina retreats into a defensive posture as Kramer legs it into the box and Lockwood comes on and gets the pass. There's Lockwood on his move going right. Winding, firing, saved by Dave. Hit him right on the stick side, right into his stick. Not a well-placed shot, but... Uh, Carolina quickly back now into offense. They look to gain some momentum. Syracuse 9, Carolina 5. Charlie Lockwood only 1 of 8 in his shooting in this game. Well, held on to by Cornish despite the stick check by Charlie. Michael Thomas has been quiet for quite a while. New face on defense for Syracuse yep. out there. And what a save by the back man, Winship, behind Saran in the crease. Oh, not able to. Oh, yeah, Lockwood's there. Unsettled. And here comes Lockwood. He feeds it into a crowd and a score by Jamie Archer. 
Uh, Stratton was in there down playing defense, and then Winship helped make the save. The ball went back the other way. That's how fast it happens, and you're going to see Lockwood. Now, see what I would have done? I would have said, all right, let's settle it down, but watch what Lockwood does. Fortunately, he doesn't listen to me. He's looking for a trailer, and look, they got Day looking at Lockwood, and then he gets to go watch. Ooh, right under, stick side on Did Day. Did you see how that pass threaded right through Ooh. three men? Yeah, really zipped right in there. Syracuse in double figures at 10 to 5. Last year's team is the highest scoring in Syracuse history. And here's Don Finn racing with Wade. Finn trying to contend there with the defensive pressure of Holmes Harden. And he still ho holds on. Just checking, Dave, briefly. Uh, face off. Syracuse 11 to 6. So they're starting to exert a little influence there and a little domination in the face off department. Gil Martin lost the shot. Here's John Dolan. No possession yet. Archer has it. Archer has two goals in the third quarter. Archer fires. Save Day. Good save by Day. And maybe interference as he tried to outlet. Yeah, that's an illegal pick. Syracuse will get the ball back. Leading it 10-5. to five. There's the move. Nice save. And watch, he gets the ball, traps it. Well, that's right. You can't do that. See, that? that's an illegal pick right there. And not only that, he was trying to dislocate his jaw with the end of a stick. The officials are doing a great job of uh, watching this game. Not an extra man opportunity. There's a cutter, and there's a shot. And it's backed up and lost for the moment by Archer. On to give back to Ryder. Good defense by Paradine, 41. Behind the back, what a pass, and Ryder missed the shot. Boy, Syracuse is just going after every ground ball, and they're coming up with him. Don Finn has it now. He beats his man. Here he comes. Finn crank it high and wide. Syracuse? Syracuse yes, will Syracuse still retain ball. it. That was Gil Martin, 44. Good hustle. Day has been seeing lots of action. This is the 29th shot by Syracuse of 14 in this 15 actually in this period. So Syracuse has been putting the shots at Carolina. Now here's Colsey with a pair of goals with an in and out hesitation move and there's Day. Great save. Day's made a number of saves there in the yep. third quarter but he's getting lots of opportunities. Yeah. Loose ball. Syracuse is going to get to this one. But they don't hold on. Instead, it's McNichol. Carolina hasn't been across midfield in what seems like five minutes. McNichol looking for a call. Carolina works it behind with Spears. Syracuse using lots of bodies in this game. Pat Kugavan in now on defense. 18, Kugavan in? Yes. This is really the difference between this year and last year. Syracuse deeper, more legs. Doyle trying to find his defensive assignment at Saramet. Meanwhile, play goes on. Colsey playing defense there on Webster. A Webster. freshman against a pretty good player, and there's going to be a penalty against Syracuse. Slash. That's it. That's the call. So. Is it Doyle for Syracuse? I think is going to get called for the slash. Right there, you had Colby. Oh, that's Colsey. A freshman. Colsey at 188 pounds, working on Webster, a junior, only 160 pounder. So sometimes the uh, physical advantage can make up for the lack of experience. Doyle was the one they called the penalty on, so it'll be a slash. Man up opportunity number five for Carolina. They have cashed in on one of four so far. This is Thomas. Look how quickly Carolina moves that ball. That's the key in an extra man. Nice save. Save, Saran. You had a good look at it. A Carolina player knocked to the turf. Another flag and a goal by 
Webster from outside. Well, that should be wiped out. That'll be a procedure call wiped out, I'm sure. And uh, it'll also should release the man from the penalty box. There's the... <laughs> he's knocked him down. And then the, there's the shot by Webster. And that uh, will cancel out the penalty and release the man in the box. So they're all even. And it's 10-6. And they creep back to within four. Fazy out for Syracuse on the face. Gil Hooley for Carolina. Syracuse up to 11 face off six for Carolina at this point. Fazy picks this one up. And Fazy's oh. pass intercepted. He almost Tough. got it back. Yeah. Dolan lost it. Syracuse had a crack at it. Fazy is still in there badly. Archer missed it. Ryder missed it. Kramer has it. Now that's... Kramer loses it. Kramer <laughs> gets it back. John Barr comes on, number 30. What a sequence, huh? It shows you just about everything that can happen in lacrosse. Tough defense. Let's see, they've got uh, Archer behind. Marichek over on the wing. Carolina in this game has never had back-to-back -back goals. Lockwood looks for a seam. Backed up by Ryder. Carolina led 1-0. Syracuse got the next three. Carolina eventually tied the game at four. Syracuse had a 6-4 lead at the half. It went to 9-4. And right now it's 10-6. So the only lead Carolina had was 1-0. Six seconds into the game. Carolina, Dave, up to this point has only four shots this whole quarter. Archer with a pair of goals here working on Paradigm. Archer goes down. Marichek. <laughs> Look at him. He's trying to play cute and see where the ball ends up. And, uh, and it, it worked like, out. Yes, it did. It's a paradigm. Yes, 41. And uh, Marichek just kind of stood there, let the ball go, let them chase it, and knocked it out. Did a nice job of blocking off. Down to a minute and 50 to go in the third quarter and a... 10-6 game. Has not been the track mate, Dave, that we thought. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's, they've been legging it up and down, but some settled offense here now for Syracuse, and uh, obviously Harden getting aggressive for Carolina. And they spread things out a little bit. Syracuse does. A little more room. If this game ends up with a Syracuse victory, I think There'll be a lot of talk about Syracuse able to win on a defensive effort. It's something last year, you know, they didn't, uh, that was not what they were noted for. They Lockwood had is double. Lay draws the penalty. Shot coming. It's in there. And that Matt Ryder. And that penalty will be good, too, unless they uh, decide to give him just a hold. Looked like a slash. Let's see. There's the move. Now watch. Boy, they really doubled him there. Go oh, right there. That was a nice dump. And then just, whoop, I'll go high. I'll tell you what, Dale, the extra body strength, the upper body strength that uh, Charlie Lockwood has added may have been responsible for him to fight off that double team. You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, strength is important in every sport, and it's becoming a little bit more so in lacrosse, as you see right there. The Lockwood uh, able to put that by. That must have been a technical which was wiped out on the... They must have just called that a hold. So Syracuse is going to take a timeout now. Syracuse takes the time with a minute and five to go and a lead of 11 to six. We're nearing the end of the third quarter and Syracuse has the lead. There's Dave Klarman and his Carolina Tar Heels. He is unbeaten as a coach at Carolina. 18 and 0. Well, before the game, we had a chance to talk with Syracuse coach Roy Simmons about his new goalie today, Chris Soran, relatively untested after transferring from Franklin Marshall a couple of years ago. Well, he's untested in Division One. He's not untested. He comes from a Division Three school, Franklin and Marshall. Very fine program, Syracuse coach. Uh, he came here last year, and uh, he paid his dues and learned that system as a backup. Didn't play a lot. Uh, tomorrow, uh, this is a big challenge for young Chris Saran. 
He's a good goalie. Um, this is his first test. It's a heck of a way to jump into a bath, right into a hot one. And here is the last goal. Attempt, but saved by Saran. And he is having that kind of a day, and we help from Winship. Syracuse is what, third different goalie in as many years? Yeah. Caleb and DiLorenzo and Saran, and here's Fazy off the face. Oh, he's knocked out of his stick. Carolina should get it. They will. Yeah. It was a pass, or checked out. At any rate, Syracuse will not retain possession. Carolina will have to clear. Daisy's a young man who I guess wasn't all that heavily recruited by Syracuse, but showed up and said he can face off. And he was right. Good defense there. Thorpe, big stick Mitty, just a nice job. He has been hustling all day and has done a fantastic job for a guy who is just getting used to this position. Well, a lot of new names figuring prominently. Saran, Beardsley, Thorpe, Colsey. I thought they might, I, I really thought they might go at Beardsley being a freshman uh, on the defense, but they have not tried to pick on him. Oh, beaten there. Archer, he scores. Or did he? No. no. It hit the side of the cage. He, and up they go now to Dolan. Easy to spot with a black high tops. Behind goes Carolina with Spears. We're down now to that much time to go in the third quarter. Ten seconds. Spears has had himself a pretty quiet game. Working Quite a on matchup. Yeah, it's been that way all day, those two. And that's going to... Oh, oh, low hard shot that beats the clock and ends the third quarter with Syracuse up 11-6. Ryan Wade beat the clock. Had him screened and then took the low, low shot right along the carpet, and you'll see what happens. It's like three, two, one, off and in by Ryan Wade. A nice shot, 11 to seven, the lead. We'll be back with the fourth quarter. Don't go away right after this. Three. 15 more minutes of lacrosse, barring an overtime, of course. And Syracuse is leading North Carolina 11 to 7 in the rematch. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolcher. The crowd applauding as Syracuse gets set to face off here. And now the crowd coming to its feet. Crazy and Dusick at the face-off circle. Fazy in after it. Fazy has it. He'll head off now in favor of John Barr. Syracuse will look to add to their four-goal lead here. It's been as high as five. It was a two-goal lead at the half. A one-goal lead after a quarter. Syracuse has been patient offensively, I think. Excuse me. Here is Lockwood faking the shot. And that's some of the discipline and the patience you just talked about. Yeah, when they've had to, you know, uh, get the ball and start up in a fast break, they've been able to do it. And I think last year, I don't think they were as, as comfortable with the patient offense, Dave. And they, they seem to be very comfortable with it right now. Syracuse has killed nearly a minute of this fourth quarter. They get it inside the John Barr for the turnaround. That's like a baby hook shot. Yeah, that lets like getting in the low post, and uh, you got all the guys in there. It's amazing how they got that ball in there, but... If you can get the ball in lacrosse down low like that, you've got a big, big area to shoot for. Right, and watch number 30. Watch him see he pops off. He's just got a stick up. Ooh, you know, it was just an inch. You know, the defenseman had the stick up, but uh, not able to stop it. And John Barr, all he had to do was turn around and stuff it by day. And goal number 12. Ricky Kramer with the assist right there. That was a gorgeous assist. Carolina tried to come back and they missed. Saran in a foot race and a dive to try to influence the officials, but it stays in Carolina's possession. The Tar Heels trail 12 to 7 here in the fourth quarter. Through three quarters now. The shot total in Syracuse's favor. 
one thing about the shot, Syracuse, though, took 19 in the in the third quarter to six for Carolina and shows you what they did in that quarter. So the uh, cumulative statistics a little bit misleading as Syracuse, I think, came out at the half and really has put the pressure on offensively. Donnelly sending behind now to Saramit. I'll make that Michael Thomas 13. Tully. Oh, oh, he goes into the air and he scores. Saran contending that he was in the crease and he is right. Tully, number 41, playing defense. And we'll see right there as the move by Thomas. He beats him. He got inside now. Yeah. His foot was on the crease. Syracuse is in a little bit of trouble again now. Fidel is guarded by Tully. I'd say Tully looks pretty comfortable on defense after being switched back. There's a goal by Carolina. Donnelly firing it from outside. It was just one-on-one -on -one against the goalie. Yep. And uh, you're going to see Webster out on top and not even able to get stick on stick and he just that was so hard and he beat him to the offside that goalie could not adjust and Saran gives up a goal to Donnelly and Carolina closes to four. So Fazy out again for the faceoff. And Busick, I believe, for Carolina. There they are. This is the important part here. If you've got a lead, you can maintain it if you get that fade. Nice flip. Fazy gets it. He's going to run out of trouble. See if he stays in, takes a turn offensively, gives it up. And he's going to, yep, makes a break for the goal. And here he comes. Oh. Is just over his stick. And what is the call? He was in the crease. Yeah, his momentum carried him in. But so I they tell you, playing. it was a great look because they thought he was going to go out. He turned and sprinted and was wide open. But the pass was a little high, and he couldn't get a good shot off, and then took a short sojourn through the crease. So now North Carolina still looking to put back-to-back -back goals on the board for the first time in the game as they come up field, and it's played by Ryan Wade. Wade has it knocked away, and Tully picks up the loose ball, but is a bad outlet pass. And then he comes back to correct his own mistake. DeBurn and DeBurn Reed. Reed, who can outrun just about everybody, is coming down the sideline. And he's still going. A nice feed from behind. Look, at the, look at the guys on Marichek. They didn't know what, which way to expect that ball to come from his stick. Four guys run Marichek. Ball still on the carpet. Finally scooped up by Carolina. Carolina in position, and for the first time they do have back-to-back -back goals, and now it is Syracuse 12 and North Carolina 9. They let Thomas, they let him free, and he just took a hard shot. And you're going to see that, watch, they get the ball, they double there, he's wide open, they cannot get in his stick. You've got to be able to get on his stick to alter the shot, and when he is one-on-one, -on -one, Michael Thomas is going to get a goal, and he picks up number three and brings Carolina to within three. 12.09 and Syracuse fans a little nervous. They know how quickly goals can be scored. This time off the face off, it is Busick and Facey. Cordish really cocked that stick and hit Archer with it. North Carolina has it and Busick dribbling it at the midfield line. A little fast break defense. They got a Ooh, oh, good down. grab. Pulled down that by Spears. In that game last year, Dale, Syracuse came from behind to move within one goal of tying North Carolina at 12 to 11 in the fourth quarter. But then it was Eric Saramet with an extra man goal to give Carolina breathing room. They went on to win 19-13. Right here it's 12 to 9. Spears. Yeah, nice defense by Thorpe. That was serum at number 11. Cornish. McNichol. 18 with it. 
He'll take Kramer behind. Changes directions about six, seven times. Knocked away. Get it out of there is what they want to do. Saran comes out. It's off of his stick. Carolina keeps him. 10.54 to go. They want to put the pressure on. They got a lot of time, obviously a lot of time. Down by three are the Tar Heels. Well, there's Beardsley out up on top with Webster. Good takeaway by Beardsley. He's a freshman. He does look like McCabe with that move. Doesn't he? Picked up by Ryder. Ryder now to Kramer. 10.21 to go as Syracuse gets the offensive possession. Trying to get Thorpe off and bar in. You know, I look at, I said, Bars uh, in the middle there. He's able to force himself. He's 6'2", 190. He's a big kid. And he's back where he is on the crease. Lockwood well, he has, has it now. Lockwood to Finn. Lockwood heads off, and Gil Martin will come on to replace him. Jamie Archer to Marachek. Gil Martin back to Marachek. Tom's been quiet for a spell here. Yeah, well, you see, when the last time he had the ball, there were four guys on him. Syracuse is close to killing off one minute. Remember, they got the ball with 10.21 to go. And now, right now, we're at the 9.21 mark and a good save by Billy Day. Hi, Syracuse retains possession. You know, the idea here is, you know, take some good shots, run some time off the clock, and let's get some good shots off, get the back up. And we'll keep the pressure on Carolina. And they're spreading them out. And Carolina, and a double, likes to jump. John Barr was oh. nearly taken down by McNichol, who comes away with it. This is where they had problems, this fast break defense. Before, Syracuse settled down, got everybody covered. Saramet, nice good save. save. The rebound, Carolina. Webster feeds the crease and Another Saramet save. again. And a man may have been in. Cornish stepped in the crease, but he was pushed. Nice couple of saves there by Saran. Here's the pass. Looking for the crease. Shot, bounce, Saran. Whoa, we rode it right up over the top of the cage. Just what you're supposed to do, although they like you to do a little earlier than that. Nice job by Chris Saran. There's Joe Bedell, Fanville Manlius graduate. DeBurn Reed is on him. DeBurn a short stick midi. Tried the wrap check. Bounce shot is wide, not a good shot at all. Oh, not a good shot, and, and uh, Saran and Thorpe ever present with that big stick get to the end line before anybody from Carolina can get near it, and Syracuse is going to clear. They've had occasional problem today, but generally good job of clearing, and now they're just going to sprint that over with Kramer. And as you just saw in the quarter-by-quarter -quarter scoring, this is the only quarter in the game in which Carolina has an advantage. Right now, 2-1. to one. But time is an ally of Syracuse. Lockwood Double. gives it up, and the ball is going to bounce almost back to him. Can't interfere with the goalie stick as he's in the crease. Under eight minutes to go, Lockwood deflects it. Holmes Harden makes a pass to the midfield area. Donnelly has Wade to his right. Buzek coming on into the picture now. All right, again, this is Syracuse able to get into a settled situation, at least for the time being. Oh, over the top comes Tully. Big check. And that's, again, the outlet gets that's, away. Yeah, that's the one I meant. They, they've really been in pretty good position, but they've had some... Some poor passes, and now they're going to get the beneficiaries of that poor pass. Really bailed out on that one by Carolina. Yes. So now with exactly seven and a half minutes to go, Bill they're, Tully, they're going to put really a, a factor in this game. They're going to put a 10 on ride. They're going to have their goalie out. You watch Day. He's going to come out of that goal and play defense, and they've got a 10 on ride, which leaves the goal somewhat open down at the other end. So they got everybody covered. So, ostensibly, you shouldn't be able to get free. Oh, Andy Bolin took a shot to the head. 
Golan nearly went off sides. Loose play on the ground ball situation. Maritek's over there. Carolina is going to get the ball. 7.09 remaining. A little, uh, you can hear a little smack on the helmet. You know, incidental contact is not a penalty, however. So, uh, Syracuse will have to play a little defense now, once again, as Carolina was had that 10 on ride. And, and the Orange men are going to apply some pressure of their own, Dale. Yeah, they're going to, Day does a little AstroTurf pass. He gets it to McNichol. Reed is going to come over to play him. Now everybody's got to pick up their man and make sure that they've got stick on stick. He dropped it. The crowd let the official yes. know that <laughs> the ball was no longer in the stick of Steve Spears. Let's see. Yes, again, they'll be on the, the 10 on ride. They got everybody on them. Nobody's open. Nobody should be free. Saran, Yow. tough pass. Colsey is in pursuit. He gets there but overruns it. It's like a full court press in basketball. Although the goalie's back now. It was the same idea. Holmes Harden has it for Carolina. The defenseman will look to give it up. He has he played does. well, Harden. But in the meantime, that clock is moving down toward the six minute mark. Now, if you're on defense for Syracuse, you want to make Carolina take as much time as they can. And you do that by playing good defense, like Tully just did. He has really been a star in this game. So is this guy, Thorpe. Got to get rid of it, though. Beardsley now, the other newcomer on defense, and Winship. Big hit on Gil Martin and a late whistle. Syracuse. I like Thorpe out of Elbridge. Jordan Elbridge, he's just playing intense, and whenever he gets in there, he's trying to make things happen. That big stick midfielder. He's a junior, Dale, by way of Herkimer Community College. Yep. Outstanding junior college lacrosse program. Yep. Dom Finn with it now. Five and a half to go. Finn with a fake and a score. The finisher. Tom Finn. It's a, it's a classic because he gets McNichol to lunge for the stick. He holds the stick out, and when McNichol goes for the stick, watch what happens. He's going, I got the stick, watch. Watch McNichol. Whoop, gone. That's it. Now I got you beat. And he takes that left-handed shot, and he gets the far side of the onside, and two goals and an assist for Dom Finn. 1-1. When he went for the stick, Finn had him. He's from Yorktown, Don Finn, sophomore. Syracuse does save it on the side. Lockwood giving it to Marichek. Penalty marker into the fray. Let's see what we got here. Everybody's pointing. We're going to... Unnecessary roughness. Maybe against... Let's see, it must be against Carolina. Yep. Marajek was in the area. Now there's the save by Lockwood. There it is right there. Absolutely good call. Bill with the high cross check there against Charlie Lockwood. And if it wasn't illegal, it was unnecessary. So he had them both ways. So now we're down to five minutes and 10 seconds to go. A four goal Syracuse lead. And they fire and score. Billy Day was not expecting that. He thought Syracuse would run some clock. Or at least pass the ball around once or twice. Steve Bettinger said, why not? All right, there's the one pass. All right, two passes. Now, when they usually stand like that, nobody shoots, but he does. And you see, look at that. He's a great shot. Look at the defense right there. You can see him all in his zone, standing there, man down, and Bettinger just whomped it by him. And you just saw in the huddle, John Desco... Took an errant stick to the head <laughs> in the celebration. He's okay. 14 to 9 now. They'll have to reface it or 
He's going to reface it. Yep. He said uh, illegal on both players. Wade and Fazy. They went before the whistle, both of them. A crowd, Dale, of 13,638. The only lead by Carolina is six seconds into the game. And Syracuse scored three unanswered. They have never trailed since. Last time this game was at 4-4. Well, Fazy's certainly done his job. He's got his 17th faceoff to eight for Carolina, so that is a telling statistic. When you're down and you uh, you got to get the ball back and you got a guy like Fazy taking him away, a lot of heroes today, Dave. It's been a long time also since North Carolina has been held as single digits in scoring. Here comes Gil Martin. Knocked away from him, and Carolina picks it up now with four and a half minutes to go. Music at the midfield strike. With the fake, he's coming in, he's shooting, and it's deflected out in front where Winship is there. He loses, but there is Beardsley. Over the head of Gil Martin. Played, though, by Archer. Give and go. Off the deflection, pulled down by Day. The outlet to Buzek. The whistle was away from the play. Procedure call. That'll be Syracuse ball. 3.56 left with a five goal lead timeout for Carolina. So Dave Clorman, who has never lost in his year plus at North Carolina, now has his team facing a five goal deficit with under four minutes to go. 13,638, it is the third largest regular season crowd to see a lacrosse game here in the Dome. Nice crowd, nice game. Obviously, if you're a Syracuse fan, but it has been well played and interesting. I thought the fact that Syracuse not really having a lot of games under their belt might have a little bigger impact, but they have played very, very well. That's our new name, Adelphia. Cable Communications, our address is the same. Super Sports, bringing you college lacrosse once again. I guess we started doing this uh, back in 1983. And uh, I think we can safely say we've been able to introduce a couple of viewers to the game. Yep. This is a replay of Gil Martin trying to kind of force that shot in there. There's the kind of hit you take in lacrosse. That, that's a good look at what lacrosse is like. If you're within five yards of a ball, you can get clobbered, even if you don't have it in your stick. And it was a good example of it right there. It's a tough game. It's a fast game. And, Dave, they strive to make it faster all the time. Syracuse has it now with three minutes and 50 seconds to go. Tom Marachek flicks it in the air. It's pulled down by Syracuse. Marachek gets the return behind the back. They feed the crease. And it's just wide. Who will own the ball? It's Carolina will yes, because Syracuse will. player ended right up in the crease. Yep. Syracuse had Mark Fietta in the game. A uh, new midfielder. Tight new man, name. man. He's a freshman from uh, Jordan Elbridge. Jordan Elbridge, another place. You know, you talk about West Genesee, FM, and JD. Jordan Elbridge, a number of guys played for Syracuse. Nice interception by Doyle, and anticipating, oh. and he took away the passing lane. And we get a whistle. What do we got? The violation not, not against yet. Syracuse. Failure to advance. Can you explain that? The failure well, you to get, advance? You get 10 seconds. you got to get it out of that zone. If you don't get it, if you don't advance it past that particular spot, and then there's another spot between there and the midfield line, then you lose possession, which is one of those rules we talked about that try to make the game ever faster. Seemed like a quick 10. There is Tully, and Saran comes out with it. We'll be selecting our Pepsi player, or maybe players of the game when this one is over, and the defense is going to get my vote, or at least well, somebody they, on the they, defense they, will. They certainly, uh, they've certainly have performed well today. It's a, it's, it's a new defense, and uh, it's, uh, they had Winship back, obviously, but uh, a 
converted attack man who was actually a converted defenseman to begin with and uh, a brand new freshman out there in the close defense but the defensive midfielders have played great and uh, they, Thorpe number 10 right there has played great so I they've just played good team you know that's a a real mark, I think, of Carolina was good team defense, and Syracuse has played exactly the way I think Carolina played last year in their national championship year, as playing just excellent team defense all over the field. Carolina had the player of the year in Dennis Goldstein, the goalie of the year, Andy Piazza, the defenseman, Graham Harden. They had some excellent midfield people, Robert Dzicki and Craig Haslinger. They lost nine players to graduation. They brought back 30 lettermen. But Syracuse's depth has really been the answer. And there's Saran with a save. Now we're down to two and a half minutes to go. And I said at the outset of this one, Dale, it was kind of like that Ali Frazier fight number one with so many people anticipating it. Right. And now as we get down to the closing seconds, it'll be like the end of a fight with the people standing and applauding. That'll be coming up in about two minutes. Didn't get it in there. See, now there was another call. Didn't get it in within the required amount of time. And so they called it another. It has not been quite the explosive battle in terms of scoring uh, as these two heavyweights have met. It kind of started out that way in the first quarter. Then the defenses and the goalies, especially Saran, started to assert themselves. And uh, there's a and double. There's a double by Winship and... Doyle, that pretty much is the story of this game. Now with a minute and 45 remaining. You know, they said that Syracuse said they had something to shoot for starting out the season at number two, but they're not going to be there for long at number two. Saramet fires and Saran saves, comes out to play his own rebound. Look, he's coming down to play a little low. Now well, he's going to go back. Into Marichek and in the cage. Oh, what a beauty. The exclamation point by Tom Marichek. That's his fourth goal of the game. Watch. He's going to do it behind the head. Yes, and right down between the legs of the goalie and uh, what else can you say except Tom Marichek's been doing that since he got here and he is the consummate attack man, there's no doubt about it. Four goals today, plays defense, hustles, and really epitomizes the whole Syracuse team. The attack of North Carolina held to five goals in this game. Meanwhile, Syracuse attack has accounted for seven, eight goals now. There's a shot that's wide. Legs not a factor, Dave. Nobody appeared to be to either team, and they just uh, went right at each other. Great lacrosse game. You, you know, too, Dale, that, that national semifinal was played in extremely hot and humid oh. weather, and so the lack of depth was an even bigger factor. That is a goal yeah. for North Carolina. With exactly a minute to go, Carolina hits double figures at 15-10. to 10. Busek getting, I believe, his first goal of the game. And uh, we're going to see the pass in from Spears. And watch, <laughs> nobody on Busick, and he nicely takes a low shot. And then you see the ball, it hit in the net. <laughs> nice job trying to knock it out. You see the net rippled. And they called the shot in, and the fans stand up to applaud in the final minute. Loose ball off the stick of Jeff Schusler seeing his first action. On the ground and played by Winship. Well, he's got to be feeling great at about this time. He's played great today. He thought his career was over not only as a lacrosse player, but perhaps as a future Navy pilot. When he went down early in that game last spring. But he's gone the whole way and has really showed excellent speed and mobility. He really has. Got to be impressed also with the young defenseman from Syracuse, Beardsley, 47. And you know, Sean McGowan in. Three yep. times made three great moves. Three great things happened while he was in there. 
Well, there is no title at stake in this game, but certainly psychologically, this one is a huge win for Syracuse now with 20 seconds to go. McGowan. Saved by Day, and the crowd's going to count it down now. Syracuse has defeated North Carolina in a battle of number one versus number two. Syracuse 15, North Carolina 10. Roy Simmons, the winningest coach in college lacrosse, tacks on another. And for the first time in his uh, college career, Dave Klarman has been a loser. We'll be right back in just a minute. There's your final score, Syracuse 15 and North Carolina 10. So the Orange men open up the season with a resounding victory over the defending national champions. Dale, what about the Pepsi player of the game? I really like Chris Saran. I think he came up big in probably the most, obviously the most important game of his career. A little shaky early. They scored on him with six seconds only gone in the first quarter on a, on a fast break. But what he did is he came back and he made saves like this for the rest of the game, ended up with 20, and I think just really deserves to be the player of the game. And Dave, his defense did a great job in front of him. Yep, the changing of the guard in the Nets, and Chris Saran coming up big as the Syracuse knocks off North Carolina 15-10. Great defensive effort by John Winship coming back from the injury and Brian Tully, and there's one very happy man, Roy Simmons, used a lot of players and comes away with a convincing win, number one. Next up, the Yale Bulldogs take on the Syracuse Orangemen. We'll have that one for you on Super Sports. Check your local listings for the time and place in your area. Once again, the final score is Syracuse 15, North Carolina 10. Now speaking for Dale Drive Poulter, this is Dave Cohen saying so long from the Carrier Dome. This has been a presentation of Super Sports and Adelphia Cable Communications.